So on our panel tonight, I'm going to ask Mr. Bailey to go ahead and introduce our panelists tonight. Go ahead, Mr. Bailey. You're muted, sir. <laughs> the shaking caused the muting. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Uh, Mr. Thomas, before we get to there, Mr. Thomas, could you just give us uh, permission to record this webinar, please, so that we can always share it with all of our friends and family. Good, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so our panel tonight, having on our panel tonight, we have coming to us none other than Mr. Tommy Stewart, one of our very own parents who is a firefighter and he's an active member of our PTA. We have Mr. Councillor Lambert Rear, where one of the, the counselor for the Claremont Division. We have also Mr. Adrian Reed, Red Cross first aid responder. And uh, we have Mr. Raymond Bingham, a geologist, I want to, I like to call him, and also a teacher at the Mannings High School, who will be talking to us a little bit about uh, earthquake and all this shit. You and I just call it uh, the earth a move, the earth a shake, and sometimes we get so nervous that we stand up one place and we stay up on the bed. But the truth is, uh, our friends here have partnered with us to have this conversation so that we can look into what really is earthquake and what we should do and even their roles um, the roles they play in an earthquake in the preparation for an earthquake and also the aftermath so you see we're taking it three phases what um what to do if there's an earthquake um the preparation mode that is what to do when there is an earthquake, which is the actual earthquake and what actually happens after the earthquake has passed. And so we know we have a panel lined up that is equipped, good and ready to give us nothing but the best um, information to make sure that we are earthquake ready. Right, Chantal Beckford? <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Mr. Bailey. And, you know, I like to start things off because we, we don't want to assume that everybody knows, you know, what's an earthquake because, you know, to, for, uh, as for me, it's like probably persons who say, you know, just a, the earth just a shake. So, and that is why I love that we have Mr. Raymond Benham, you know, geologist from Mannings High School, all the way in Mannings, you know, to give us just a breakdown. What is an earthquake? What is really happening when we experience an earthquake? Mr. Benham, is he here? Yes. Hi, good evening, everyone. It's a privilege to be here. I um, just want to thank you for having me tonight. Um, greetings, Mr. Bailey. Thank you for the invitation. I'm actually a geography teacher, I'm not a geologist as well. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, um, well, so an earthquake is really a real vibration that is caused by a number of events. It, in, in Jamaica, it will be really caused by um, plate movement, moving up plates you know, those slabs of, you slabs of rock um, for those who are not in the technical area that is moving under the earth and will cause vibration. But it can occur if you live in other areas and those persons are living in other parts of the world it can cause by volcanic action. Mm -hmm. And even sometimes by whole human activities, you know, as such as drilling and, you know, using explosion and so on. So there are a number of factors that will trigger an earthquake. I'm not sure, uh, have I responded to you to your question? Thank you. So thank you so much, Mr. Benham. So basically what you're saying, it's rocks moving, you know, against each other. Yeah, it, it's true. It, 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 sometimes rocks just rubbing against each other. Um, mm -hmm. you know, rocks are not smooth, so some they have irregular 
type of shapes. So sometimes they just stick together and that pressure just fill up. Just as your pressure cooker sometimes, you know, fill up pressure, your pressure in something, and then it just starts to just snap and that will cause that vibration. Or it could also be, you know, place just that those rocks should be moving apart. That will cause just a minor earthquake, which is quite common to Jamaica. Normally, we tend to have a minor earthquake, almost 200 earthquakes per year in Jamaica, which are normally minor earthquakes. Wow, thank you so much. It's interesting that you said that because I was about to ask you mm -hmm. when you you said minor earthquakes in Jamaica. Um, I was about to ask you how much we experience. I know you're you're bringing to to light that we experience over two hundred earthquakes um per year, and yes. that is very interesting because it suggests to me, um, to us that we we don't feel the earthquake sometime when it passes. What could you say as to what is the cause of that or? All right, um, well, most of the times and even throughout the world, we tend to have minor earthquake, meaning that um, it's on, on the Richter scale, so to speak, it is anything below four um, on the Richter scale. So normally most of our earthquake here in Jamaica is below um, that magnitude. And so, if we really, really um, feel those type of, of vibration because the epicenter, um, basically it might be away from Jamaica, but also that um, it, it's just, it is so minor that it, most times deep down in the, in the earth's crust, in the earth as, you know, crust that we, not to feel those type of vibrations. So um, it, those earthquakes, we, we, it seems like just a few persons who will be close to the epicenter, that's the place where you know the strongest um, vibrations are felt. And so most persons will feel just minor rumbling in those areas. You see what I'm saying, you know, um, <laughs> Mr. Ben, um, you know, most of Jamaicans got all of that information. I'm sure Mr. Bailey himself didn't know all of that information because we just feel a shake, shake. And, you know, all of that entails. Thank you for that information, Mr. Benham. Just stick around because we're coming back to you, you know, because you're our geologist right now tonight. <laughs> yes. I'm going to move things over because we have a firefighter in the house. And... Persons may be wondering, firefighter, earthquake, like what is the linkage? Mr. Stewart, Tommy Stewart? Is Mr. Tommy Stewart here? Yes, yes. Mr. Tommy Stewart is here. You yes, know, and you know, the... guys, before we even go in, Mr. Tommy Stewart is currently the PTA president here at Frankwood High School. So he's a parent, and of course, you know, our oh, firefighter tonight. Well, he is a firefighter tonight. So, Mr. Stewart, um, persons may be wondering what is the linkage between earthquake and fire? Like, wham, um, talk to us about that a little on that, Mr. Swite. Mrs. White? Yes, go ahead. I, I, I got bumped off a while ago. Could you repeat your question? I have to, I have to make some corrections though. I am, not the, I am currently not the PTA president of oh, Kernport okay. High School. All right, so I should say former PTA yes, president. Former. All former right. Is, okay, yes, ma'am. All okay. right, then you asked that question. You asked okay. that question. Mm -hmm. I was saying, um, many people may wonder what is the linkage between an earthquake and fire. You know, why is the, the the firefighters have to be on scene when there is a you know an earthquake or a major earthquake at that? What is the linkage? Why do we need the firefighters there present? All right, All right. pleasant evening to your panelists. Pleasant evening to the rest of the individuals joining, parents and all. Well, certainly, Mrs. Um, hold on. Mrs. White, uh, an earthquake is an emergency. 
and the Jamaica Fire Brigade is an emergency organization. So where there is distress, we are always there and we are always called to respond. So you would appreciate that in an earthquake, you know, a number of things can happen. One of them is fire. One of them is, you know, uh, collapsed, collapsed buildings that can, you know, trap persons. So in instances like those would be requested and or, or assistance needed to do search and rescue and so forth and so on. And as I said, if there is a fire, then we'd need to be there to extinguish him. Sometimes, you know, even because like you said, you know, at the top of your, your, your intro, um, earthquakes are not something that you can, you know, pinpoint in terms of when they will be coming. So you may be on the road driving, you know, and then you find yourself, you know, involved in an earthquake. So, and you know, obviously that can cause an accident and then clearly our response would be needed to, to deal with same. That's just right. some of the areas that, you know, we touch as it relates to our organization as an emergency organization responding to earthquakes. All right, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Mr. Stewart, for that information. Also, because we, we have the, we also have, um, we're going to touch a little on Mr. Reed, his, his role. He's a Red Cross first aid responder. Mr. Reed, are you hearing us? We all can understand the need for the, the, the Red Cross um, responder, but for the benefit of those persons who may not understand, what is your role as it relates to earthquake? Mr. Reed, your, the floor Hi. is yours. Good evening, everyone. Um, well, just a quick correction. I'm actually the youth director for the Red Cross. So I'm actually in charge of the youth program across the island. Um, but in terms of our role as the Red Cross during times of disaster, we are usually there either responding with first aid or helping to distribute um, relief supplies to persons who may have been affected um, by the earthquake. In terms of first aid, what we would do is our trained persons being on site would try to have persons who have been injured as a result of the earthquake, you know, get them recovered if they're unconscious, try to get them responsive again until additional help arrives, you know, whether the ambulance to get them to an, a hospital or something along those lines, professional, additional professional help to make sure that their lives are preserved. So that is the main purpose of the first aid that we offer to make sure that the life is preserved until they can be taken to professional or additional professional help. So that is the main role of the Red Cross in these times of disasters whenever we have them. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Guys, I hope we are really documenting this information. And of course, we have the counselor for the Claremont, Claremont Division, Mr. Lambert. Mr. Bailey, do you still have him on cell? On cell, Mr. Bailey? All right. I'm not sure what is happening there. But for the benefit of those persons who are just uh, joining. I'm hearing you. My mic was closed. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead, Mr. Weir. What is your role as the counselor? Hello? Sorry, you're not hearing him clearly, Mr. Bailey. If you if can um uh, you know project a little. Go again, Mr. Mr. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Um, Lambert. We are hearing you. You are hearing me. Okay, uh, let me repeat myself. I said good evening to the panelists. And um, I, I see where you do a very good research here to show all the linkages in the, in the disaster preparedness situation. All right, um, for the parish also, hello? We are hearing. Okay. Um, on the parish council side here, the municipal corporation, we normally is the, the main source or entity that deal with the disaster. Whenever a disaster strikes, it's either the parish or it is something island wide. Mm -hmm. um, through the municipal corporation, we have a parish disaster committee chairman, personnel who works with the parish council or the municipal corporation, so to speak. 
and that individual is a person who coordinates with the different entities, um, the civil, um, the voluntary agency, the political director, civil service, churches, and other private sector groups. And this will take in the, the Red Cross, the small brigade, the police, because we normally have a command center. And from that command center, that's where all information and plans are taking place. The mayor is also the chairperson for that committee. So whenever a disaster strikes, or if you are preparing for an hurricane, the parish disaster committee steps in, and the center sets up. All right, thank you. Mr. Um, Mr. We're there, and for those who are just joining us, welcome, and we really appreciate the turnout that we're having tonight. We're focusing on earthquake awareness under the theme, drop, cover, and hold. Earthquake readiness is within your control. Now we're going to go in a little bit, because remember we, we mentioned earlier that we're going to be breaking things down. So over back to you, Mr. Reed. Adrian Reed, back to you. Um, in terms of the do's and the don'ts, you know, could you kind of brief us on the do's and the don'ts um during an earthquake or yes, Mr. Reed? Sorry, could you repeat the question? In terms of the do's and the don'ts during an earthquake, you know, can you offer some tips at this point? All right, so as it relates to um, do's and don'ts during a earth, an earthquake, um, of course, you would have to make sure that persons are evacuated. Okay, so in the typical earthquake drill, as we as mentioned before, we can't really prepare for an earthquake. But what we usually do in schools in terms of having persons um, prepare for it is we do earthquake drills. So the typical drill, you usually have an alarm being sounded. And the response to that is usually that we encourage persons to go into a stable area in terms of, for example, going under a desk, into the door jam, under the bed, a heavy desk, or even a table and chair, something along those lines, something that will protect your head, especially in case something is falling. So the main response is make sure your head is covered during times that um, any time an earthquake is happening. So you go into somewhere that will protect your head. So like I mentioned before, under a desk, under the bed, something along those lines. Also, make sure that you move away from windows, glass, or any light fixtures or anything that may fall down on you, something like a bookcase or a whatnot or a chest of drawers, anything along those lines. Make sure you stay away from things like that because if the shaking does intensify enough, it can fall on you and that can also lead to damage of you that can lead to your death if it comes to that. Um, after the shaking has stopped, we would encourage you to evacuate to somewhere clear of trees and any other form of things that may fall. So light poles, trees, near to buildings, stay away from all of those things that may cause additional harm if it's a case where they may fall. So you have to find a somewhere clear and stay there until you have, um, until you're sure that the place is safe. Afterwards, then you can do your assembly, which is, well, yeah, you're assembling at this point in time. You check to make sure that if, for example, if it's in a school setting or you're in an office or somewhere like that, you do a check off to make sure everybody's accounted for. And afterwards, once you've assured, you're, you've assured that everybody is accounted for, then you can do your evaluation to see, you know, what has happened and make sure that, you know, everything is safe. Call the necessary help if needs be, the ambulance, the fire brigade or whomever else may be needed to assist if in clearing rubble or helping to get persons assistance if they have um, gotten any kind of um, damage, bodily harm. Wow, quite a lot of information there, um, Mr. Reed. Really appreciate the information. And for those who are joining us or have joined us, you know, please remember this information. Because as we said, you know, earthquake, unlike any other disasters, we cannot be fully prepared for it. So the info, the more educated we are, the we are better equipped to tackle that. Now, um, Mr. Stewart, I know you're just you know, you're playing the role as a parent and our firefighter tonight. But do you, um, the fire station or the fire department, do they have any form of community program whereby the residents are somewhat educated on the different disasters? For instance, tonight, earthquake, 
you know, any programs that are in the communities, if, if you know. We certainly do, Mrs. White. As a matter of fact, we have a section here in St. Anne's Bay in the Jamaica Fire Brigade on a wall that is called the Fire Prevention Section. And what they do, um, you know, in, a, in collaboration with other agencies like ODPIM, they sensitize, um, you know, institutions, companies, you know, to, to get them ready in the event that such an occurrence take place. So this is a routine kind of situation that happens where, you know, there's, there's no lapse as to, and especially in these times, when we are celebrating Earthquake Awareness uh, Month, that 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 kind of sensitization is ramped up, you know. So we do that by visits. We do that by the issuance of pamphlets and other, you know, um, you know, other literature um, to these various places, you know. So to ensure that they are prepared. We also are um, involved in, in um, you know, carrying out drills with these institutions or these businesses, these companies, you know, so that the members, the employees, and the rest of the, the working population of such in, um, institution is aware of what to do, when to do it, and the, the various, you know, steps to take. All right, thank you so much. For that, Mr. Stewart. So persons who are listening, you know, of course, you know, can visit these various sites. Mr. Um, the counselor, Mr. Weir, is Mr. Weir still on with us, Mr. Bailey? He is, yes. Yeah, I don't know if I'm somewhat putting you on the spot right now, but let's say we are to have an earthquake and we have a major one. Is there a budget in place for the community, you know, um, to, you know, in the recovery process? All right. When I, I, I spoke earlier on, I should have mentioned the ODPEM, which mm. is the um, agency that my, to, for government of Jamaica responsible for taking action to reduce the impact of disasters and emergency on the Jamaican population and economy. I should have mentioned about the ODPEM. So um, you mentioned about budget. This is where the ODPEM would step in because they normally have a budget put in place to assist along with um, the, counts, the, the council. So most of um, disaster preparedness would have been managed under the ODPM along with the Parish Disaster Committee within the municipal corporation. So there is a budget that's put in place by the government for things like this. All right, thank you so much. We still have to ask what that's for the information. Mr. Going back over to Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed, um, you're representing, of course, the Jamaica Red Cross. I mean, let's say we have an earthquake. What's next? What is the next move? What is the urgent move from the Red Cross, Jamaica Red Cross Association? Well, <clears throat> unfortunately, we don't have ambulance drivers on standby to be able to mobilize, but in times of um in most of our branches, okay, so the Jamaica Red Cross has 13 branches across the island. So each parish has their own office for the Red Cross. St. Anne has their office in St. Anne's Bay, of course. Um, so we, and then we also have smaller groups that we refer to as era groups. In these era groups and also in, within the branch itself, we have persons who are trained. So we usually have them trained in the communities to be able to mobilize in times of disaster. So they are then able to get the information to us at either the branch office or to national headquarters. And we would also be in touch with other groups like the ODPEM and so on, and the fire brigade, of course. And so we'll be able to mobilize the necessary help, get ambulances on site, and also get the additional help to persons. Um, if we need any kind of resources, evacuation is needed or anything like that, we're able to mobilize this kind of assistance. And of, of course, as I said in the chat, we also partner with the JDF, Jamaica Defense Force, to also mobilize resources to different areas that may be damaged and that may require that kind of assistance. All right. Um, a question for Mr. Bingham. And I, I know, I, I know that sometimes the the earthquake comes with. Uh, yes, Mr. Weir, I just muted your background. Um, but we still have you. 
So I know that sometimes um, these earthquakes comes with what we call some aftermath. So sometimes we may find that there is a, a tsunami or there can be a fire. Because in the 1907, there was a greater, um, there was an earthquake that caught um, all of Kingston to, come, to set on fire. The city of Kingston to set on fire. Now, tell us how dangerous these earthquakes are and what actually causes the, the especially in the event of a tsunami, because we have most of our communities in St. Anne on the coastal line. Tell us what are the um, what causes that, and uh, um, what what kind of sign do we look for if there's any sign in terms of even if we're on the beach, chilling, you know, and having a good time. Um, thank you, Mr. Bailey. Um, well, um, the aftermath is sometimes is one of the most dangerous part of the um, the earthquake in terms of aftershocks um, I, in response to the 1907 um, earthquake in Kingston, uh, you, you find that most of the damage actually in that earthquake was actually done after the, the, the major earthquake. Um, you have about 1,200 cases um, person who died um, in that earthquake, but most of the damage um, it was really after the earthquake. It actually triggered um, fires in, in the major fires you said in, in downtown um, in, the, in that area. And that as a result of can happen because of anything that may, you know, can initiate a fire, especially, um, you know, uh, persons in, uh, in areas where can cause any kind of combustion. But um, Jamaica, um, if, and I'm sure if most persons know that Jamaica in history have uh, record two tsunamis, um, and not major ones, it's quite rare um, in Jamaica, but we have recorded actually two in Jamaica based on history. And this may occur um, as a result of movement of plates um, under the sea, and so it may trigger mm -hmm. as a result of plates colliding and you know subducting in, in, in that sense. But it could it trigger and and what it does it there is always a sign uh, the water retreating from the coastline, and so most time you see the water retreating, you think it sometimes is a great phenomenal, a great thing happening, but it's actually a tsunami. And so it is something that we have to prepare ourselves because most of our most of our, our um, population is on the coast and in Jamaica have major towns and tourists and so on uh, in the town era. And so we have to be very aware of, of, of the potential for tsunami. The fact that we also in, um, have huge fault lines around um, in that area, in our part of the hemisphere, it means that we are quite vulnerable. With the, the sad thing is that we really do not have a tsunami warning system as yet um, in the Caribbean that can warn us, but we need to ensure that we are ready. I know that in Black River, so to speak, that they, they have a sign of that you have to be mindful of tsunami and so on. So it's always good to be educating person about the likely chance of tsunami if there is a major earthquake. So it so the aftermath, it can really create a lot of damage and it and it normally creates a, a loss of life. And I remember um even in India some years ago, 2004, that went over. 250,000 persons who died, it was most of the persons who died were as a result of that tsunami. So it's important that we put things in place and especially, you know, um, that we are a country that majority of our population are living on the coastal here. 
still with you, Mr. Bingham, because for those who don't do geo, because we're always when, when it comes to earthquake or so, we always hear the term magnitude, right? Um, what is that? Because to, to what 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 is the magnitude that we don't want here in Jamaica? Or how do you measure that? How how talk to me? All right, um the well the earthquake unit use the the um instrument um which that we normally use in order to measure earthquake that that UWI that you know so we we tend to, to use that but it's when we talk about magnitude we're really talking about how strong the earth um earthquake is the intensity and there's two types of magnitude that um I I, I believe that um, the representative from the fire department will, will tell you because um, there's one magnitude that is during the earthquake where we measure the vibration and how strong it is, but there is another magnitude where the, the fire department will have to come in and assess the building and see, you know, in terms of how um, damage there were as a result of the earthquake. So it is. So basically, it's how strong the earthquake is, the intensity, and the ones that we, we don't want to really have something like um, in in Port Royal in 1692, 7.1. It can be very devastating, but all right. So seven is 7. the 2. extreme. So I'm just yes. Well, um, we can say 5.7 to six to 5.7 above because the last. A um, major one that we have here, I think it was in 1993, of about 5.4 on the the the, the Richter scale. So, so which number it goes over? What what is the the um what I say no the middle number? So after that, we know it's strong. All right. So, so we would normally not want to have anything over um 5.5 here in Jamaica. So the extreme mm -hmm. six and above can be very devastating. So six and above are really strong earthquakes. Um, is there a time factor to how long the earthquake um, shakes in terms of a minute, two minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, or it just shake as it has um, as a, as a rhythm? <laughs> well, um, well, each earthquake really, um, I, we don't really can say that we have a specific time range, but generally you tend to have um, earthquake probably um, like in the 90, 90, like 30 seconds. Um, some can extend up to three minutes or, or so, but um, it, it, it really depends on a number of factors in terms of, uh, in terms of the pressure that is that generate this type of, of earthquake and what is happening with the with the different place, the slabs of rock that we spoke about earlier. So normally earthquake is just uh, not normally more than three minutes, but as I said, that we can have other aftershocks that can also take a little bit longer than that. Oh, in an average, then, uh, my friends here on the platform and those on YouTube, in three minutes, we are saying that a, a shake can change our lives forever. And so we want to be very, uh, we want to be as ready as possible. Um, should um, should um, there be an earthquake? And, and, and we know we can't stress this um, anymore, that we can never be too ready um, for an earthquake. Now, I want to come over to um, Councillor counselor Ware. We know that oftentimes we, we encourage our schools and we encourage our churches and we encourage um, our offices and business places to be earthquake prepared and earthquake ready. We practice these drills at school and at work and we, we, we work them in and we work them in. Tell me something, earthquake doesn't come when we're at home. And if it does, um, 
what says you about that kind of preparedness in terms of your community? Is there a, a bullhorn going around on the top of the car saying, hey, we need to be earthquake ready? Do we have events and activities like those in our communities, just sensitizing our people in these times that, listen, we, we, we can't take it for granted. Um, we have seen several earthquakes as an island, and we have... We have known devastation to earthquake as an island. Um, I only could recall one tsunami, and that was the one of um, 1762, which was, um, we know, Port Royal. But now I'm learning that Jamaica has experienced two tsunamis. So in, 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 um, um, in your communities, do we have any kind of those activities um, counselor, just preparing our people for in the event of an earthquake. Do we have activities like those? Mr. Bailey, before one correction, okay. um, right. Um, our earthquakes normally last between 10 to 30 seconds, but aftershocks can last to one to 10 days. All right. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you. For, so 30 seconds can change our lives forever, people. Eve, so three minutes was it, but now we're hearing that it's 30 seconds. So 30 seconds, just think about it, people. And sometimes when we feel this earthquake, it feel like it has been shaking for forever. So imagine 30 seconds taking down buildings, removing water, um, sending it back to the land, um, leaving people in all kinds of colorful ways that we don't want to be seen in. It's a real thing. We want to be earthquake ready. Should in case there be an earthquake because we want to ensure that we are preserving lives. We are preserving lives. We're preserving lives. You know, I just say that, you know, Mr. Bailey, I have a question for Mr. Stewart because I remember the last time I felt an earthquake. I was in Otras at the time. Yes, um, right. Just a minute, Mr. Where was and Councilor Where was responding to a okay. question. Yes, yeah, go sir. ahead. Yeah, I was responding to the question that Mr. Bailey had asked. Um, and it's a very good question. Um, there is no uh, tone cry thing, as you mentioned, going around to um, prepare people for a quake. Uh, one of the things that we depend on is that the association in the different communities, um, the churches, the school, which I, the, the school do a very good job in preparing the students and students will pass on to their parents. But I think it's something that we should really put in place and insist that all the community um, active groups be informed on how to prepare for an earthquake. And I think we are lacking in, 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 in that way. I, I thank you for that kind of uh, um, clarity and honesty, um, Councillor Weir, and it is indeed something that um, we're hoping that you will take back to the municipality so that we can see how best, because it's never too late for a show of rain. And now that we are able to identify some of these weaknesses, that's why we have these conversations, so that we can hear from the, the ground, the grassroots, um, some of these um, ideas, and so we can put them forward. Um, another question, finally, I would want to ask you before coming back, uh, Mr. Weir. I don't remember. Yeah. I'll come back to you. I don't remember it right now. Miss White. Okay. Okay. All right. I assure you, we'll remember. Just shake up the head a little bit. Just shake it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It, it's just a question I have for Mr. Stewart. I mean, Mr. Stewart is a firefighter himself. I, I, as I was saying, I was in Otteris the last time I felt an earthquake. And after that, me not hearing a fire truck, a girl. Wee, wee. Like, at what point do you guys, you know, see it as emergency for you guys to head out to see if anybody has been injured or, you know, at what point, what, what do you use to, um, to, to scale that down? Okay, Mrs. White. All right, so this is an organization that responds um, when we get calls or otherwise alert, you know, people walk in and inform us or, you know, communicate to us 
you know, instances where they need, you know, or assistance. So, I mean, in an event like that, possibly it was a situation where it may have shook, but not as, you know, devastating to have warranted our response uh, or something like that. More than likely that was the case. But usually if there is a, an earthquake that, you know, would have shaken so badly to have caused any form of damage or, or hurt to anyone, we would have been probably the first persons to have been contacted and we would have responded in a safe manner as possible to, um, to assist those in need. Thank you for that, Mr. Storr. Thank you so much for that. I see that Mr. Reed, representing the Jamaica Red Cross Association, you, you want to say something? Go ahead. Hi, yeah. So just some additional points um, relating to the tsunami warning. Actually, we now have a tsunami alarm that has been installed in the Old Harbor Bay Fishing Village, Jamaica's largest fishing village in, in the country. So we actually now have an alarm there that was put in place recently by the ODPIM and also the municipal corporation. So it was a partnership between them and it was funded or assisted, the whole process was assisted by the UN. So that is now in place. And so the Jamaica Red Cross has been working with these groups as well. And so we've also helped to coordinate multiple tsunami drills in especially Old Harbor Bay because they're a fishing village. So their livelihood depends on the sea. And since they're mostly at sea, so it would make sense for us to have them, you know, prepared so they know what signs to look out for in case an earthquake happens on land and they're out by sea they can know what to look for in you know case a tsunami is coming in and so on so the persons there have been sensitized and trained um, about um, responding to tsunamis and so on so this is something that we could possibly look into having in other sections of the country especially since we have so many coastal area well all of our most of our main towns are coastal areas so definitely it is something that can be done I want to pause for a minute for, for those persons who have just joined. This is the Earthquake Awareness Webinar. Um, we're here discussing you know, everything that we need to know about an earthquake. So we are recognizing this under the theme, drop, cover, and hold. Earthquake readiness is within your control. Now, um, I don't know who I should point this question to. Um, what are... How will work be documented during the recovery of an earthquake? So let's say, you know, we have a major earthquake. How will work also be documented? Define work. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by it. Right. It's like how, let me break it down. Because um, remember, if, if, if possible, the power lines will be down. And, and stuff like that. So in terms of the, the workload, how would that, all of that be documented? I don't, I'm not sure if I'm clear, you know. Well, all right. Usually they, okay, so there is a group that exists called the National Emergency Operation Center, mm -hmm. which ADPEM, the Red Cross, the Fire Brigade, the JDF, all those different major stakeholders are all a part of this grouping. So we usually activate any OC in times of, for example, hurricanes and at that point in time, we would activate like shelters and so on. So in the case of an earthquake, a major earthquake, what would happen is that this grouping would be activated, whether virtually or actually physically. And then from there now, we would be able to then, you know, get reports in from our various groups across the island, for example, in the case of the Red Cross. And then I understand there are other groupings that would respond in times of disasters as well. So we would have the NEOC activated and then reports would be coming in and then mobilization of the different resources would be taking place by the different um, organizations that exist or the different stakeholders that exist in the different areas. So we usually try to split the work as evenly as possible. And then it also depends on what resources are owned or had by each different stakeholder as well. So we try to distribute the work as evenly as we possibly can based on where the work is or where the damages are and where our different um, partners or members are located across the island. All right, you know, wrapping up now. So I know um, Mr. Reed, Mr. Stewart, you're, you're in the field every day, um, counselor, we're in the field every day. How ready are we as a country in terms of earthquake? Because we know hurricane, we get we get all sorts of signs, but in terms of, a, of an earthquake, how ready do you think we are as a country? And honesty, people, honesty, 
Honesty. Do you think you know you're ready? Let's start with Mr. Reed. Honestly, I would say that we need more education, more public education is needed. Mm -hmm. I know going back when I used to be in high school, earthquake drills were on a normal. So you used to have your, your charts all over the place saying, you know, what to do in times of earthquake and so on. But in this social media um, friendly time or in these social media friendly times, I don't see a lot of information being out there as readily. It, it, it exists, but persons aren't necessarily accessing it. They're spending more time on TikTok or so on, watching funny videos rather than learning about these things. So I would say a lot more public educational campaigns would definitely be needed. So until this educational um, education is spread about, you know, preparation, I don't think we would be ready for an earthquake. We might have one and two persons that may know what to do, yes, mm -hmm. but not everyone would readily have the information as to what they would need to do in the, in the case of a hurricane, um, sorry, earthquake. <laughs> yes, yeah. All right, Mr. Weir, um, Councilor Weir, still online, Mr. Bailey? Yes, he is. How ready is your community, sir? Um, I would say that we need to don't take these things very serious. They will they hear about it, but they do not take put an action to it. And, um, as one of the uh, Mr. Chambers, uh, the panelists just mentioned, and what I forget to say, that we need to do more educational uh, structured things that mm -hmm. persons can be aware of what will happen when a hurt will take place what they should do and so on, such like. Um, we from the municipal corporation, in terms of education, that's, that's one of the things that we try to to be on our guard and try to talk to people, check in their construction, because that's one of the biggest problems that we have in Jamaica right now. People construct their houses just anywhere. They don't look at the different soil types where they're doing their building. And from the parish council, in, in terms of the planning department, we take that as a priority in terms of building construction. The fire department, the fire department is also one of the entities that um, actively take part in the construction, dealing with passing the construction of things in and around the different communities. But for community-wise, I would say we need to do more in terms of preparation, how to prepare for an earthquake, what to do after an earthquake. And I just want to think numbers, the OTPM numbers, so that we can contact the OTPM in terms, in terms of if we have a disaster, not just earthquake alone, but fire, major fire, or hurricane. You, you can see that, you can see the number now. Yes, yes. It's 876-906-9604-5. We're ask you to repeat at the end, uh, Mr. Bailey. Okay, because I was going to ask you to repeat that number again. Yes. So at the end, we'll repeat those numbers. All right, um, over to you, Mr. Stewart, because, I mean, you are one of... You're at the forefront of everything, um, you know, and you would you would have been looking on how prepared, how ready are we as a country if it is that we are to get hit by an earthquake? Well, Mrs. White, I don't know if I can speak as broadly as to speak about us being ready as a country, mm -hmm. but in my neck of the woods, um, basically. I think Jamaica is a country that coined the term nine day wonder. Mm -hmm. And you would have heard the, 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 the number of times that would have had, you know, an earthquake of, of significance in this country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not something that happens every day so that it's, 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 it's always in your mentals and you're telling yourself that, listen, I need to be prepared at all times, mm -hmm. you know, and to, to add to that, Jamaica is an apprehensive set of people, you know, <laughs> you know, overall. And even if they are prepared, they panic easily 
Because mm -hmm. to tell you the truth, the last earthquake that I felt, I was at home. I think you guys felt it at the school too. Mm -hmm. Up at Fern Court there, if you were at school. I mm -hmm. was at home alone. And believe you me, when I felt the shaking, I, I, it took me some time before I remembered who I was and what, you know, I need to, you know, or I need to engage what is what, what was happening, you know. So I imagine somebody who, who, who is not trained, uh, you know, a housewife or kids and stuff like, you know, not, you know, going over this thing, you know, on a regular basis, how they would respond, you know. But certainly going back to us as a fire, uh, our area in fire prevention, where we try our best to educate, you know, schools and other institutions and hoping, you know, like, like Mr. Weir would have said, you know, the children would pass on some of the information learned because basically we, we, we have a, a, we have a small team, you know, and it cannot be stretched. St. Anne is a very wide area. So we try to do our best as that is, uh, where that is concerned. And um, clearly we, we have, you know, the, the same vibration area who, which can, you know, offer any information needed by, you know, any resident, any institution as it relates to how to get prepared for, for, um, for, for earthquakes. And obviously the Red Cross and the parish council and others. So I would encourage persons to reach out. Don't wait until you are in it before you, you, you know, you do something about it, you know, reach out because like, you know, you know, you, you never know when, when, when something can happen, you know? So, and I am, I want to also support something mentioned by Councillor Weir and that mm -hmm. is the community, you know, having the various groups in the community, you know, you know, come together and, you know, get themselves aware of these, these, these natural disasters and how to prepare for them and in turn assist the rest of the, the community to, to, to be prepared also. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for responding to that, Mr. Stewart. Um, I know you answered this question already, Councillor Weir, but it, uh, um, it came up in the chat and I would just want to give it an opportunity, be, opportunity to be heard. What is the role of the parish council read the structural integrity of our buildings to mitigate damages to our homes when there is an earthquake. So that is, what is the role of the parish council read the structural integrity of our buildings to mitigate damages to our homes when there is an earthquake? depends on the first thing the plan must be in place for any buildings that is going to be erect. The plan has to be in place. It would have to be inspected by the inspector of planning, the director of planning, also the building officers. You know that not all buildings that go to Jamaica go through any form of um inspection from the building officers or from the parish council because i tell you it is one of the biggest problems that we have in this country and in the parish of St. Anne's here a lot of putting up buildings putting up and no plan come to the parish council and uh, right now we are on a drive in terms of checking the buildings for building plans and inspection of buildings so you, you have to try to cauterize all these buildings to know how strong the structure is and so on. Building inspectors is the one who will have to inspect all these buildings to make sure that they are the right standard and the, and, and the right proportion is being done in terms of direction of it. Thank you so much for taking that question. And I hope uh, Mr. Miller would have... <laughs> 
at this question answer, Mr. Miller, you're not trick me with that big name down the front, you know. <laughs> you're not doing it. <laughs> we thank you so much. I mean, we had a great panel. Those are you. Hold on, Mr. Mr. Bailey. Um, Mr. Benham didn't show, didn't share with us, you know, the readiness of our country. Oh. <laughs> yes. So what do you think, Mr. Benham? Do you think, you know, how ready are we as a country? Because, I mean, um, you're teaching, you're in the classroom. I've had um, done mini drills and some students, instead of them drop and hold them like they sit down and look for me. You just hear the pin what is, you know. But, you know, you're in the classroom, you're out there. How ready do you think we are? I think that we, we have to do a lot more work uh, in terms of awareness, um, especially among um, the students, especially because we have, um, of two years of COVID, well, COVID is still around, but in the two years of lockdown, and a matter of fact, a lot of students and people community do not what is the alarm bell for the, you know, for, for an earthquake. And so we really have to, have to sensitize both students and community, you know, about uh, the earthquake. Uh, a matter of fact, a lot of us don't even know that it's almost over 450 um, earthquakes was recorded in 2021. So it means that earthquakes become much you know, more and more frequent. So um, here in Jamaica... Mr. So Bingham, please don't, don't run over that number. Repeat it for the Jamaican people to hear. The members of Claremont District, the members of St. Anne. Just repeat that number. 200 and what? 50 what? Uh, well, 450 were recorded um, mm -hmm. last year. Um, that is from statistics from the unit. So um, I think that we need to spend some more time, you know, talking about earthquake and know that because we do not have as um in terms of the intensity as frequent as hurricane that at a national level we don't invest in it as much as hurricane. Um, but I think we need to spend a lot more time especially because we have access to social media. We can use that and use things that will especially appeal to the younger generation so that they you know, can be much more interesting about, you know, preparing for an earthquake. Yeah. So I think we are just not there as yet. We have a lot of work. And teachers, you know, I, and <laughs> teachers I do have a lot of work to do. <laughs> you, know, right. you know, we're just wrapping things up. Um, but before we do, Mr. Reed, how can we reach you? You know, um, share your contact and where we can look at you. Sure, no problem. I can be reached at a reed at Jamaica Red Cross .org. I'll put it in the chat afterwards. So it's a r e i d at Jamaica Red Cross .org, and from there I can pass you on to the emergency services section. I can get you in touch with the Saint Anne branch of the Red Cross. And we can organize additional training, whether it be first aid, drills, and so on in earthquake or any form of other preparation or preparedness. We can arrange these for you through the Red Cross and also through our partnerships with other groupings like the ODPEM, Fire Brigade, and so on. All right. And Mr. Stewart, is it 114? Not at all, Mr. Stewart. <laughs> Not at all. All right. For, for, for you to get the direct station. I, I hope you can write these numbers down. We are. So here in St. Anne's Bay, where I'm currently located, it's 972-2322. Yes. For the Ochoa Station, it's 974-2317. Yeah. For the other station in St. Anne, Brownstone Fire Station, it's 975-2316. Yes. If, if you want direct information, if you want to call about 
um, you know, visits to your organization for preparation for natural disasters, etc. You can call the fire prevention team. They are located on Leasing's Tire Center Plaza in Windsor Road, St. Anne's Bay. And their number is yes. 794-9727. Yes. Right. So, you know, calling any of these numbers will, you know, will certainly afford you some assistance as related to what we're talking about. All right, I see that um, Mrs. Howell, Dean of Discipline at Frankfurt High School has recorded the different numbers for us in the chat. Thank you, Mrs. Howell. All right, Mr. Benham, we are coming over and over for you. <laughs> what did you do? Thank you so very much for you know, your time. And as I know you guys are on the clock and we really, really appreciate you guys. And Mr. Bailey, how can we con contact you, Mr. Bailey? Because when stress leak, we you know we need the counselors, Mr. And Bailey. I, and I want to, I, you know, that was the final point I wanted to add. And even after an earthquake, some of us are left traumatized. Mm -hmm. And so we need to contact um, a medical profession in this field, seek a counselor, seek a psychiatrist, the psychologist so that they can help you get through this phase we are hoping well we don't want any earthquake to come but should any come please don't be afraid to go by the St. Anne's Bay hospital there's a health center area there we have one in uh, stair town uh, that helps us to get over some of these uh, issues um there is Agent Reed's contact information who can link us on to Red Cross. We have it through the Ministry of Education. Seek the help you need. And if you need to get to me, please don't be afraid to come to Fern Court High School. You will definitely find four cable. Well, I think we have several counselors mm -hmm. over by Fern Court High School who are trained and equipped. We have social workers, uh, a social worker over there. Um, in the person of, I won't call her name because I, I didn't get that permission, but we have these persons who can help us uh, to get over um, some of these. We have psychosocial first aid training and certification who we can get through, uh, Mr. Adrian, because yes, we do have a Red Cross team here at the Fern Court High School, mm -hmm. and it's all about... Uh, um, um, your support, your volunteerism. We ask that you come out and just be a part uh, of the team. I also want to say, as we wrap up, a big thank you to the members of the panel. I, I can tell you, it was no hard work getting them. No. I did not. Mr. Billy? Yes, sir. I just want to leave these numbers before we close off the, the, the program. Yes, Miss Howell, set your fingers again. Yes. The Parish Council Municipal Corporation numbers 876 794 9331. Yes. 972 2615. Yes. Those two numbers for the Municipal Corporation. Also for ADPEM, it's, well, you know, 876 906 9674 to 5. Yes. 754-9077-28. Those two numbers are for Adpen. Thank you so much for those number, um, Councillor Ware. Um, so again, the panel, it was no heavy lifting. They were ready. As a matter of fact, I believe they were more excited than the team from mm -hmm. Fern Court to actually come and be a part of our panel discussion. And we appreciate that. I want to say, uh, Mr. Stewart, our parent, our firefighter, is currently, currently on the job. This man is working overtime for our nation. Mm -hmm. And we must see that uh, as indeed uh, as a, a call to duty, service to our great nation. We do not take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And before we close out, we want to give the platform to our dear principal who supports, continue to support 
the activities that we do here at Fern Court High School, I tell you, once it is to interact with our community, with our children, we can almost close our eyes and be sure that Mr. Thomas will say yes. There is, there is no, even though the budget is limited, there is nothing that will prevent him from saying no. And we at Fern Court believe that we will step up as we are called as we are called to step up in this time and we are called to make aware our communities of earthquake and they want to ensure that we are prepared and ready. So we thank also Mr. Thomas, but we want to give Mr. Thomas the floor a minute just to address um, our community. Mr. Thomas, are you there? I know we didn't inform you, but we know Mr. Thomas is always ready when we call on him. Sir Thomas. All right, so good evening, everyone. Our team here at Fernport High School, our special invited guests and those on the Zoom and YouTube, good evening. I want to thank you for participating in our webinar here at Fernport High School. Our school is committed to ensure that our stakeholders acquire knowledge and developing skills to build in character to function globally. So I want to thank all the persons who participated and this information that you present will be shared because it this recorded for all persons to get. So I really thank you and we have learned a lot this evening and I'm sure we'll meet at some point face to face. So thank you again for coming. Thank and you, Mr. Thomas. Any final words from you, Miss White, Mrs. White? Yes, and as I said, thank you, guys. Thank you, and remember our theme that we're recognizing earthquake awareness. Drop, cover, hold. Earthquake readiness is within your control. So thank you for being a part of our webinar. And thank welcome, you. Welcome. Thank you once again, everyone. Please travel safe and prepare your homes for earthquake should there be um one we love you here from fern court have a good Thank evening have a good evening good evening everyone Thank you. Evening, everyone take care I'm sure I'm going to call that this card, this don't know.